Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about my current project that has been slowly building and it's now final and it's working. Tada! Basically, my 3D printed HDD hard disk drives uh, hot swappable. Um, basically bay you can use it uh, as a independent system use it inside a computer actual idea was to make a whole case so this is what we're going to talk about today now it's a working system i have tested it all things are working fine and dandy so uh, many times i get the question is like how do i research for my videos and things of this nature uh, i'll try to make this video as a guideline so if you have an idea in your head how can you go about it in order to make this into a actual thing like you know finished project so to say so why I'm making this? Well, uh, there is a company, the very good company, 45 Drive. They had made some amazing thing. You may have seen their products in multiple YouTubers. Uh, and um, they have a new product coming out that is 45 Drive 8B. Uh, so they have a 15 one, which is the smallest they make it. But uh, 8 one is made for more like enthusiasts, so to say. And it was so bad when I looked into it the first time. It uh, boiled my blood. It was bad design. And what do I mean by bad design? Well, think in this way. If you see any hot, hard drive base, which are poorly designed the fan would be in a position where it's pulling the air parallel to the disc meaning hard drive you uh, you will have a fan here either you're gonna have a fan here basically blowing air through it or something like this like in Synology you're gonna have a fan pulling air through it now if you understand the hard drives you understand this is a really poor airflow and like you can see like hard drive is longer this way not this way and when you have something like this assuming even if you have a clean air path the moment you go into the back where you have PCBs generally or even wiring just because of so much wiring you will have very little area that's actually allow air to flow and uh, that's the bad design and that's why old servers were even with hard drives few hard drives one stack only they are very loud and that's why you no longer see that in modern system aka anything made in recent times generally they have hard drives like this basically this is the rack and air flows through this like including 45 drives storinators so this way you have air coming here air going out there is no obstruction you can pull in the hard drive pull out the hard drive you do not need pcbs with fancy systems so it was so bad i was like how the heck a company that is multi-million dollar company and has some good product how they design something so bad in terms of airflow and it's expensive also so it it bothered me it like it bothered me to no end so i was like okay i'll build my own now when i thought of that uh, i realized i have a 3d printer so and i have a working nas so might as well go yellow on it and then i found out a lot of people had made amazing 3d printed full-fledged computer enclosures be it atx computers nas enclosures lot of things and yes even on pla and yes all of them are working without any issue so that's like damn that's doable so uh, that gave me an idea it's like okay I got pissed off that was the momentum that was the you know the drive and then I was like okay I started to look into it and more and more than enough people have done it so it's like okay let me try to build this so now here's the deal this is the stage of getting things uh, you know in motion now first thing and the most important thing that I've learned as a 3d game artist make a goddamn checklist uh, ask pilots uh, so basically checklist what do i need to do first thing is airflow meaning hard drive i cannot have air going like this because there will be a wall the moment you will have wires or pcbs wall you do not want that you want air to flow through so the best way is this way perpendicular not parallel perpendicular so that was my first requirement airflow should be good meaning easily able to cool the hard drive now is hard drive that hot yes because be mindful these things generally have a motor and especially on a NAS system you may have a motor that's actually running 24 into 7 so the PCB also has a motor driver that will be hot and this this will get hot and if you have encased it in anything it will start to get really hot like even on a computer that is like a good kind of airflow it reaches 50 degrees Celsius you have a fully enclosed system with poor airflow 70 degrees Celsius is achievable and be mindful you may think okay who cares these are magnetic meaning the risk of failure goes up it's not like okay it's hot so it's dead it will uh, the chances of it failing earlier than its design life increases exponentially so you do not want that so i wanted hardware to have proper airflow on top of the hard drive should be as naked as possible one core thing you must understand whatever your heat source is you want it to go into medium as quickly as possible basically this is the motor heat should be generated here and sucked out as quickly as possible you do not want to cover it into let's say a steel case now like don't uh, jbots do that yes and now you know why they need giant fans because if you have any like basically this is heat source. like okay what if i have a sheet over it let's say aluminium sheet aluminium is conductor yes and no this boundary will create such a uh, insulation property that core temperature will go up 
and again that's why you do need those bonkersly loud fans so i needed hard drive to be naked meaning almost air hard drive that's it as free floating as possible and hot swappable if possible hot swappable meaning that uh, even like this uh, you know cooler master case you can pull in and pull out the hard drives and they have a sled so you may think this is hot swappable no while the electronics designed here is designed to be hot swappable i have to do like this then I have to do wiring from the other end. So that's not hot swappable. Hot swappable simply means is even if the computer is running, I can, oh, hard drive died. Okay, I can just pull out, uh, replace the hard drive, put a new one in, plonk it right here without any issue. That's what we call hot swappable. Like that's what people mean when they are talking about hot swappable, electrically, physically, software wise, all of that. So you should be able to just plonk it something in, pull something out without any issue. That's hot swappable. That was my fourth system. Now fifth is, it should support all the hard drives that I have. For example, this is a 3.5 inch slim drive. Uh, this is 3.5 inch fat drives, basically full size drive, slim, full size. And then I also have uh, basically, SATA SSD and be mindful that's why it has that offset it must support the same SATA system so 2.5 inch so most people will have generally one or two of these uh, again they are very cheap ironically uh, so they are still being used you may have something like this I have like this so I wanted this support so three disc support 2.5 inch slim fat and be mindful 2.5 inch also especially if you buy a SAS ones they also come in fat variety so again if you can support the full size one that's not an issue but it should support as many things as possible so this was my checklist four core things airflow must be perpendicular uh, it must be as naked as possible because like again this is very good actually you can see there is only one plastic strip here one here one here so it's almost as naked as it could be and really good even on the cage size is actually good it's just not hot swappable and not to mention um, I wanted to make my own so and again this does not have the back plane almost looks like almost looks like cooler master designed it that way and then they're like yeah the back plane will cost more than the case so let's not add that so hot swappable naked hard drives and support all the formats that are viable okay now so far everything is good everything is easy but now it comes the most boring and tedious part you must do a lot of research a lot of data gathering because you you will think oh i have this idea maybe you would be shocked how many times people have better idea than you you will be shocked trust me you will be shocked it's like oh huh that happens so i had this idea in the early days i was not even imagining that i could even achieve hot swappable because the only way i could even think at that time was to achieve hot swappable is you have basically a pcb from a basically enclosures like server enclosure replacement parts to use that would that have worked it would have constrained me to the footprint of that uh, pcb and it was expensive so i was like yeah i was not thinking about it but i saw some people actually did have this and then i was like huh there is a whole ecosystem where people are using something like this and they have a hot swappable you no longer need backplane you just need screw holes so that's far more easy to do in plastic than like you know pcb so I was like that full research I did a lot of research like almost every 3d printed enclosure there is I may have seen it already I may have downloaded it also so this gave me a very good data point I figured out how to do hot swappable figured out what was the flaw which I have seen I've seen way too many because they see Synology having air pushed through they're like okay I'm gonna do that do not do that you you must have hard drives with perpendicular airflow airflow should be like this like this should be the ideal scenario where you can for example if I activate the light you should be able to see full flesh. There is no obstruction. And to give you how big of a impact it makes, this is the short end. The whole, you have more air channel in the short end. So do not do not put fan here. If anybody puts fan on this direction or pulling, yeah, that's a bad design. That's a bad design. You can do it. We have been doing it. It's just you have to force your fan to work extra hard. And then you're like, why it's loud? And why my hard drive is hot? You do not want that. Trust me. You do not want that. So it must be perpendicular, air must be pulled through. And a lot of case study and all that, then I figured out some things. Do not try to print it in one go. Whenever you're talking about something big and something robust that's actually designed to handle, like, you know, handle some big stuff going in and out, uh, trust me, you want to print it in uh, segments rather than uh, like, you know, one giant things, because if you do one giant thing, it will be weak in one direction. Basically, the layer line is the Z height. Basically, if you are printing like this, 
while this loop would be super strong, this loop would be super strong, uh, this joinery would be super weak. So to achieve that, you may decide to print like this. Now, this loop would be weak, but this will be strong. So layer lines matters a lot. You have to be very mindful of that. This is the easiest way to tell whether somebody is a 3D printing noob or somebody is like actually designing useful products. Layer line, you must think it through. And the best way to is like having screw and nut. Not heat insert, you can use heat insert, there's nothing wrong with that, but they are unnecessarily expensive. I'm using M3 screws and nut, which are not that uh, complicated. And again, both sides are metal and clamped in tension. So everything is perfect. Plastic is in tension, metal is in tension, things are just fine. That's the, that's what I've learned. And uh, I'll try to make sure that you guys see the footage of the like, you know, slicer. Make sure that you think it through how you are going to print it. Designing everything in CAD is child's play. Making sure that it prints with strength in a 3D printer, like in my case, uh, Ender 3, that's the hard part. Doing that is the very true. And again, tolerance will also uh, have to be taken into account because PLA, while good and all, it's not uh, super amazing. So, uh, like for example, this was my uh, last spool of white. So, it was like very tight. The black one I made, yeah, and then I made sure that it's actually easy enough where you can slide in or out the hard drives. So, tolerance had to be a bit more realistic whenever you are talking about 3D prints compared to uh, like, you know, metal systems. But uh, it is what it is like you, you have to work around what are the limitations of 3d printing and all that so everything is fine everything is just working and i'm actually shocked that it did work <laughs> like uh, i'm not joking like i i was scared actually once i finished it on um, saturday i did not test it simply because i was scared it's like would it work or not but like it worked and yes including this also hot sorry uh, worked a lot of people have amazing uh, design available so and again, if you have a bamboo lab printer, you can print this whole thing in like two, three hours. It will not even take a long. So this is how you build a project. So hot swappable, I will uh, make sure that uh, you can download everything. And there is one upgrade that you could do instead of having this uh, SATA to SATA connector, you can have SAS to SATA connector. And benefit of that would be that will support uh, SATA and SAS if your HBA host bus adapter support it. So generally, if you're directly connecting to motherboard, that will not work. But if you have a host bus adapter, now you can support both SATA and SAS without any issue. Like, why would you want to do that? Uh, apparently, a lot of people are telling that for large capacity, aka 10 terabytes, SAS drives are for some reason cheaper. Brand new ones are cheaper than SATA. SATA is being sold so much, so it's like a supply and demand kind of thing. So maybe you uh, you may find beneficial to spend a little few more bucks on this puppy, uh, maybe beneficial. And again, just as a, uh, if you're gonna use host bus adapter, I might suggest just, just do it. Just do it, just in case, like if you're testing a hard SAS hard drive or you get a bunch of SAS hard drives, trust me, just test it. Now, of course, you will not get that uh, dual port because uh, then they will need to have extra uh, pins there, but you will get a single port and SAS support without any issue. So this is a Mark 1 product and same thing that I say in my videos, Mark 1 is always garbage. Now, what would I change in this? Well, uh, the biggest mess up was the spring design the basically this design again this was also designed to be printed like this everything is fine it does work it does lock but as you can see for something as huge as a hard drive i have very small space to like you know actually pull it through it does work it's just it's very painful so that was a dumb design so i have to change the uh, basically locking system in such a way that right now i cannot lay the hard drive like this because if i do this starts to press in so i have to lay hard drives like this which is a bad design you want a system to be independent people want to put hard drive on shelves like this they should it should not be like oh it's a bending this and be, be mindful this is plastic if you put it constant strain it will bend permanently deform permanently so that was my design idea would be instead of locking uh, vertically i want a locking mechanism to goes in parallel direction so to say so the locking is something that i want to design mark two of and uh, Another aspect is sled needs to be uh, <clears throat> interlocking. Right now, the sled has no locking in this direction. Basically, I put it, um, this cage has the locking system, meaning the uh, hard drive here in this and this is completely constrained. The moment it goes into this area, it's free floating. It can go, basically, hard drive can go like this and do up and down, up and down because it's not interlocking. That was a design oversight. That's on me, that's on me, design oversight. And again, why could not I just uh, uh, reinforce these side parts to get that lip? Printing layer wise, it will not work out the way I expect and the penalty would be hard drive will not be naked. And again, this is almost a touching. So I do not want any obstruction here. So the PCB gets fresh air, motor gets fresh air. So 
that sled interlocking is has to something i have to think through so that even the side wall helps in order to uh, interlock everything and uh, i this idea of having basically two sleds clamping in it's unnecessary hassle like compare this to this uh, you can see this is a one to have a screwdriver here yes i have a screwdriver so compare this to in any system like it's a, i'm the only one who is, has like two part uh, locking system which is generally not recommended it's messy it's not that you can't do it it's just don't worry those hard drives are dead <laughs> so it's not an issue The sled should be something like this rather than like two uh, free floating pieces it should be one continuous piece now <clears throat> my aim is to have something like this u-shape where i'm gonna have handle to pull through and a locking that goes into this direction but without hinges and all that because while hinges are good and awesome they do require metal parts more metal parts like i already have a lot of screws here uh, more screws and all that it may not work as compactly as i would think so uh, again that would be mark two variant so i want one piece design interlocking sleds that again that is super easy to do in plastic and metal so uh, that can be done and uh, in locking design that's what i'm unsure of like how the heck i'm gonna achieve this sort of locking mechanism this should be doable and uh, you may not want to cover this whole side because this is where serial numbers are so if you even your uh, free nas operating system tells you the hard drive is dead you have to figure out which serial number and serial numbers are printed on this side all hard drives all hard drives have serial number printed on this side so you do want the ability to see them without uh, too much obstruction that's was my original intent that's why i have pull tabs like this and uh, having a too small print it allows you to print it very quickly like in one print you can have like eight or, or 16 of them without too much issue so that was the good part of having this but interlocking wise i'm not happy and in terms of like mess it creates too much mess like i could lose it and all that so this was my whole presentation on basically how did I made this and I'll make sure that you guys can download the files and all that jazz. So let this be a very simple guide. Like if you have a motivation, you make a checklist, move through it and please do study. <clears throat> that is genuinely shocking in many designs I've seen 3D printer where there's like nobody actually thought it through. If you think it through, it's like, ah, okay, this is plastic is very strong intention. So, okay, put plastic intention. Plastic is very good in making 2D structures. Very good, awesome. 3D printers are not good in, three, uh, you know, 3D. So they are basically 2.5D machines. You have to print layer by layer and then rotate. Without rotating the layer lines. Basically, if I had printed this as a whole piece, one of them would be weak structure. Either uh, it would be weak in X and Y direction right now it's weak in no direction because again i have screws everything is uh, puts plastic in the sustainable energy direction and again if you are like making it for a bigger unit you may want to pay a bit more for sas to seta that will be also a you know easy upgrade so to say for some people in india sas hard drives are not that cheap so so I hope this video was illuminating. It helped you to learn and understand some things. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to a lot of them. And thanks for watching.